By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today it is Friday and we are going to zoom into another match from the Lord of the Jank tournament, a budget tournament. If you'd like to know more about that, dive into the description below where you can kind of read about the rules. Um, this is round number two. I'm still playing with my zombie disco deck, so it's completely revised. In a moment, I'm going to start with the deck text, and this time I'm playing against German player Roman, who's playing with a deck that I've called Tax Edge Plus. So it's a Tax Edge deck, red and white, but there is more to it than meets the eye. So I'm going to talk about his deck extensively in the deck deck, and I'm just shortly going to walk you through my deck in case you haven't seen last week's episode, or just if you want a little refresh of the deck that I am playing with. Um, now, if you want to go straight to the match itself, no problems, check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp that says MTG Games, and that will take you straight to the games. For now, we're going to start with the deck deck, and we're first going to look at my deck, Zombie Disco. And this is the deck that I'm playing this tournament with, the Zombie Disco deck. So it's the same deck that you saw me play last week on Friday, because I'm using this one in the Lord of the Jank um, tournament. And as you can see, it is completely revised, except for the Headless Horseman. That's just a, a little joke. Headless Horseman is now a zombie uh, as well, according to the new errata. And I really like the art of Quentin Hoover. I think it's just amazingly talented so that's why i put him in here uh, i actually had some questions last week some very good comments why don't you play with cyclopean mummy you're right cyclopean mummy would be a great two drop in this deck also a zombie now summon zombie but i just want to stick to revise for this brood that's the only reason why cyclopean mummy is not included in this list um let's now look at the deck so what i want to do is i really want to take full advantage of zombie master now zombie master does two things it gives my zombies regeneration and it gives my zombies Swamp Walk. So those are the two strategies I'm using in this deck. I've got four Neverneurals Disc. When I blow everything up, my zombies can regenerate, my Will of the Wisps can regenerate. I can use my Animate Deaths to get the strong creatures from my opponent to kind of battle on my side. How cool would it be, by the way, if Animate Dead would make them into summon zombies as well? Unfortunately, that's not the case. I think flavor-wise, that would have been quite nice. Um, but anyway, that is the first strategy. So that's really the main strategy. The second strategy is based on the Swamp Walk ability that Zombie Master gives to all the other zombie creatures. As you can see, I'm playing with two Bokrafts main, and I'm also playing with four Evil Presence. So with Evil Presence, I can make any land into a swamp, which is quite handy in a format with Mistress Factories, as Mazes of If, Dual Lands. Well, actually, there are no Dual Lands in this uh, tournament because we're playing budget so we're not going to see that but still City of Brass is of course a great target the only but is um, Evil Presence doesn't work fantastically with the Nevenerals disc combo so kind of when I play an Evil Presence I kind of have to think in my mind okay when am I going to play it what is the result that I want for example do I want to do it in the start of the game to kind of make it difficult for my opponent to play out whatever he wants to do so I can kind of get ahead like a tempo play or do I want to play it more as a finisher when I've got enough creatures with Swamp Walk and I just out of nowhere give him a Swamp and I trample over him um, you know because I have to keep in the back of my mind when I cast my Nevernerals disc, disc it will also destroy um, my evil presences and and now that I'm saying that the same goes of course for the bad moons that are in this deck three bad moons okay so this is the deck it's pretty basic it's still it's a lot of fun to play and it's very budget friendly so if you like this kind of deck this strategy you can easily make it yourself it's not an expensive deck to brew uh, let's take a look at the deck of my opponent Roman who also played a is also playing a budget deck but a completely different deck Lance uh, with land text and Lance Edge Tex Edge Plus. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Roman. Now, when you look at this deck, if you let's just start at the left top corner. So obviously it is red and it is white. And when you look at that left top corner, you see four land techs, two lands edge, and two winds of change. So you think, okay, this is your typical Tex Edge deck. Maybe, maybe you want to play with three lands edges instead of two. On the other hand, you can play with two. I've seen plenty of competitive Tex Edge decks playing with two lands edge. Now for the people that don't know, the strategy of this deck um, is actually pretty cool. Lands Edge is an enchantment from white from Legends originally and it's been reprinted so it's it's 
not cheap, but you can easily get a cheaper version. So uh, when you play this out, this one seems to be an Italian black border, by the way, when I look at the prints, but I could be wrong here. So when you play land text during your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you can look for lands in your library. You can choose up to three basic lands. You have to reveal them to your opponent and then put them into your hand, and then you get to draw a card. So you shuffle again and you get to draw a card. So, I mean, that is quite amazing, right? With one card every turn, potentially you could draw three cards. I know there are three basic lands, but think about this. If those basic lands are out of your deck, you're going to draw pure gas, right? Because you're not going to draw another land. And because of land tax, you never have a land problem. So a lot of players enjoy using this next to Armageddon in a white weenie strategy. Now there's also an Armageddon in this deck. Now next to land tax, we see Lance Edge, which is an enchant world. And this is the Chronicle version, but it's originally uh, printed in Legends, which is which is quite expensive if you want to get it in Legends. And that's actually pretty recent because I think two, three years ago, the card wasn't that expensive yet. But okay, but let's talk about what the card does. So it's a red enchant world. And what it says is any player, so including the opponent, so I can do that as well, any player can discard a card to deal two damage to the opponent. In other words, if Roman can get 10 lands in his hand and he can discard them all, he can deal 20 damage to me and I'm pretty much dead, right? So that is definitely a strategy that he can follow. Now besides this, and I think this is where the deck gets interesting, he's also playing with a lot of direct damage, which is quite normal still, but also a lot of creatures, which is pretty abnormal. So let's first just look at the direct damage. Four chain lightning, four bolts, two earthquakes, and a disintegrate. So this is just a full package. And then he's got the white influence, which is control. White in old school means control. He's got two disenchants, three swords, a balance, and that Armageddon that we talked about earlier. Now this is quite special because most Tex Edge decks play with Wrath of God main, they play with more disenchants main, three swords, okay, that's kind of common, you see that more often. But what Roman has done, and I find this quite interesting, he has said, you know, I'm gonna combine Pink Weenie and I'm gonna combine uh, the Tex Edge strategy together. So he's also playing with four Savannah Lines, four Granite Gargoyles, um, two X, Rook X from the Arabian Night, and two Sarah Angels. So he's got a ton of creatures in a strategy, Tex Edge usually doesn't have that many creatures. Actually, a lot of these decks are creature-less, so they play with Moat, for example. Now, Moat is not an option because we're playing budget, remember? So we're not gonna see a Moat, so maybe that's what gave him the idea of combining these two playstyles together. So I really like this combo and this Pink Weenie aggression. And the interesting thing is, if you play against this deck and you don't see Land Dex or you don't see Lance Edge, you're probably thinking, oh, this is a pink weenie aggro deck. Strong decks, don't get me wrong, but you're not thinking about, oh, this is a combo deck. Um, so, you, you know, he might put you on the wrong foot. And when you look at his sideboard, um, you see that he has the possibility to take creatures out and actually add more, go more combo. So depending on the deck that he's playing against, this is what I think he wants to do. Depending on the deck that he plays against, he's gonna change his strategy. So, for example, if he's playing against me, he might think, okay, I'm going to put in the Karmas, I'm going to put in the Wrath of Gods, I'm going to put in the Ivory Towers to gain life. Um, he's probably not going to put in extra disenchants, maybe Spirit Link and Swords to kind of control my more swarm strategy with all the zombies. So I, I could see him doing that. So it's it's quite interesting. And maybe he's going to put me on the wrong foot where I, where I don't see uh, the combo component in his deck. And... For me, of course, what's going to be difficult to deal with is actually the Rook Egg, because Rook Egg is a com is a combo with Nevernural's Disc. If I blow up my disc, the Rook Egg will, will go to the graveyard, and that means that at the end of turn, he will get a 4-4 Flyer. So that is actually not a good deal for me, and also I'm pretty much uh, pretty afraid of the Earthquakes, because remember, if I only have one Zombie Master in play, um, Zombie Master doesn't give regeneration to itself. So I need two Zombie Masters in play and then that works. They give each other regeneration. I do need enough mana as well. So for me, Earthquake can also be a pretty devastating card. And of course, playing against direct damage, it is just difficult because you have this feeling you're constantly on a clock. So a deck that combines, you know, cards like Savannah Lines with Chain Lightnings and Bolts, that is very, very lethal. And also having that uh, Lance Edge, Land Tax combo in his deck, meaning that he can just, you know, throw some lands at me to deal that those final couple of points of damage. I think 
this is going to be a hard matchup. I have a chance. I'm not saying I don't have a chance. I mean, Nevenor's Disc is a strong card. I, I can wipe all those 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 combo enchantments off the board, but it is going to be it is going to be tricky. Okay, let's go uh, to the games and let's see how this is going to end up. Let's go to game one. Game number one is about to begin. As you can see, I'm sitting on the left here and playing against Roman with a pretty cool trike playmat. And remember, we don't know what decks we're playing. So unfortunately, I didn't see his deck list beforehand. Although it's much more fun if, if you don't see it. And I believe it's Roman on the play. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. It looks like we're now deciding if we want to keep the hand or not. So Roman looking at his starting seven. I've looked at my seven. It looks like I'm going to keep... And Roman is going to take a mulligan. And um, like I said, this is the second game of, or the second match, I should say, of the tournament Lord of the Jank. So I've won the first one, two to one. So that means I've got two points because every game is one point. And my opponent, Elmar, that was my opponent of last week, got one point as well. And now I'm taking on Roman. And we're all in groups and the best two. So with the most points, they advance to the top eight. And hopefully, hopefully I can make it. At least they had a good start. It looks like Roman is going to keep and he's on the play. Look at this. A Willow to Wisp here. Swamp Willow to Wisp. So that's a turn one play. Pretty good for me. He's uh, Roman's got the Mishra's Factory. Is he going to play a land and animate? That's exactly what he's going to do. Dealing two damage here to me. So I'm going to go to 18. And Willow to Wisp is one of those cards that everybody played back in the day. And it hardly sees any play now anymore. Oh, look at this. And am I going to play the Evil Presence on the Mountain or on the Mishra's Factory? It's not clear, unfortunately. Let's see. Okay, so I'm, I think Roman's going to get a counter. So it looks like I'm targeting the Mishra's Factory. Going a little bit more defensively, thinking maybe he's playing, you know, one color. And here we can see he's actually playing two. There is a, uh, a plane, so possibly a disenchant later in the game and this is quite nice that bad moon makes my will of the wisp a one two so now i've got a one two regenerator but there's also end step disenchant making the mishra a mishra again actually getting rid of that evil presence second mishra tapping for four there's a rook egg that is a bit of a problem what can i do here tapping one again another evil presence and this time i'm targeting the white land trying to take out his disenchants, deciding not to attack with the Willow, wanting to keep that blocker for those Mishra's factories. And it's always nice to have, you know, multiple swamps to regenerate because when you're playing against red, a situation that can happen is that Roman will attack with a, with a factory. I will block a factory, regenerate, and after that he will play, for example, a chain or a bolt. But now that I've got uh, three swamps, look at that, another Mishra's factory. And uh, attacking with two, so I can only block one. There's a chain to make matters worse. This is a known combo, of course. Luckily for me, he doesn't have two, um, two red mana to make matters worse. But this is bad news. He now has a 4-4 flyer. I get to play out Escape Zombie, pointing out that it's now a 3-3 because of the bad moon. But this is a lot of pressure for me on the board here. At least I'm cutting out his white sources. There's a chain probably on Escape. Exactly. Escape Zombie's gone. That means he can now just attack with two of his factories. And of course, I'm going to block one. And he's... Oh, no. I'm going to block the 4-4 Flyer. That means I'm going to take five... No, just five damage, I guess. At least I'm going to drop to 12 here. There's another Escape Zombie. But things are looking really, really bad for me. I need a Nevenerals Disc. Actually, Nevenerals Disc is not ideal because it doesn't take care of the Mishra's Factories, although I can use it in his turn, of course. So at least a Disc would give me some leverage. Attacking now with both, and I mean, I'm on 12, probably not going to block yet with the Scape Zombies. I am going to block the 4, 14 damage here, but remember, he can pump it. Ooh, and he's actually not pumping it, just deal dealing two and then playing out another Flyer. There is a Zombie Master, which is okay-ish, but it's not a solution. I'm not really drawing bad, but I think that Roman is able to put so much pressure on the board with that 4-4 Flyer and also with the early Mishra's Factories. 
attacking again. Remember, he can pump the factory to a 4-4, and now I probably have to block his 4-4 flyer, take damage from the gargoyle, and block one of his factories. This is not nice. So I'm blocking with my scape zombies. Am I doing that actually? Oh yeah, I'm putting a regeneration shield on. We kind of had to talk about that because these days it's called the regeneration shield. No idea why, but let me know in the comments below what's the difference. I'm sure there's there's some kind of big difference. And um, yeah, we're kind of discussing that now, I guess. Tapping three, I need something here. Again, it's not bad, but it's not gonna cut it. I'm on eight. Okay, this is good news. My hand seems to be empty. But this is actually pretty good. Asking about um, his hand size, he still has three in hand. And I'm actually deciding to attack him. Now remember, um, all my zombies have Swamp Walk. Also my zombie masters, because they give each other Swamp Walk and regenerate. And he's got a Swamp in play. I still think it's a little optimistic of me to attack here with the zombie master, because I just need all the blockers I can get. Because of the Bat Moon, of course, they're all pumped. They all have plus one, plus one. So I've got a pretty decent army. And I've got those two willows to block his flying creatures. The problem is I don't have a lot of regeneration power. I only have two black open and I probably need those two black to regenerate my willows to block his granite gargoyle and the 4-4 bird token. And that of course came into play as a result of that rook act that Roman chained at the start of the game. Rowan does have a slight mana issue and still no access to white. So I think that's kind of what's keeping me alive. If he would have access to Swords to Plows here, things would look really bad for me. And he's attacking right now with a 2-2 and two flyers. So probably have to block the two flyers here. And then the question for me is, am I going to block the factory? Remember, he can pump the factory to a 4-4. So maybe I have to sack my scave zombies here or I can decide to double block. And um, with that, kill his factory because my zombie master is a 3-4, my scape zombies is a 3-3, but then I do lose one of the two creatures. So this is quite a difficult decision. There seems to be some connection issues with Roman. On Roman's side, I say not with Roman. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is, this is tricky. I think in my opinion, looking at this now, I think the best decision would be just to double block and maybe, you know, sack the scape zombies and at least take care of, of one of the factories. Let's see if I'm actually going to do that. So it looks like I am double blocking. And I'm taking the damage of the granite gargoyle. So I'm double blocking. I'm waiting for him to, to tell me where he's going to put what damage. And then I'm going to regenerate the creature that, get, that takes the damage, obviously, so that it survives. So he's going to lose the factory. And he's actually not going to pump, so deciding not to pump, seeing it doesn't make any sense because I have uh, that regeneration option still. Drawing a card, and now it's looking much better for me, actually. I do still think this is risky, although, although I mean, I've got enough to regenerate here. What am I going to do? <laughs> this is pretty sweet. Royal Assassin joining the party and I, I am on six that's my problem here because I'm playing against a red deck but the good news for me is I kind of got board control I, I feel like it there's still oh this is bad news finding city of brass so he's taking care of my royal really understanding that that's a big problem so that's not great on the other hand I gain a life and the royal ensures that for example my willows stay on the board and I really need those willows to block those flyers. I think Roman right now is a little bit stuck. What he really needs is just some, some bolts and some chains to finish off here. Remember, I'm playing with black. I can't counter. I can't reverse damage. There's no COP red. I mean, direct damage for me is just, there's not really a lot that I can do about it. Especially when it's aimed at my life total. I can attack here again with three. Roman's on 12, so that would mean he drops to nine. So that's pretty sweet. Playing another evil presence. Now what am I gonna target? Probably a city of brass, exactly. Really trying to cut off his white mana. 
because I just I don't want to encounter another swords. Maybe that's strange because direct damage is also a thing, but with City of Brass, you know, it's N red and it's white, so it's really the best option. The factories I can block right now, and he's actually attacking with everything. So I'm on eight. I've got enough mana to regenerate. Um, this is really just something he has to do to survive, because next turn I can just attack with all my Swamp Walkers and kill him, I think. So blocking his two Flyers, uh, and then I'm probably just going to block his two Factories, because I don't want to take the damage. Remember, I can still regenerate, got three Swamps open. And that's exactly what is going to happen. I don't even have to regenerate um, because of that Bad Moon. Going to A tier casting. I was just emptying his hand here, playing a land tax and an ivory tower. And it looks like I'm gonna take the victory here of the first game. And boom, and that's it. And I must say I'm a little bit surprised because at the start of the game, I thought Roman was going to trample all over me. And interesting here is that in the end of the game, uh, Roman gave me some, uh, some information about his deck. So I saw a land tax and an ivory tower. Uh, so that's interesting. And now we are going to sideboard before we go to game number two. Game number two. And we're off to the races. Roman here, City of Brass, into Landex. This is what he wants to do. Really curious how he sideboarded. Uh, we saw in that sideboard that he can use uh, different strategies. So he can choose to uh, completely go. And there seems to be some connection issues, by the way. But he can choose to go completely um, creature full or completely creature less. And maybe he's going to use for uh, choose for the latter, uh, considering that I was really swarming him in game one. I just uh, drew a lot of creatures. So despite the fact that he started very strong, and here is a bad moon on my side on uh, turn two. And that does mean that his land tax is active. So that means during his upkeep, because he has less land than me. Um, he can start looking for lands, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Picking up only two lands, so that's interesting. He's not going for the full three. And at this point of the game, I haven't seen a lands edge yet. And I remember that I was thinking, oh, he's probably playing Pink Weenie with a land tax in it. So I'm not expecting a lands edge, and I already can tell you that. So that was definitely an error on my part, and I also took out some of my Nevernural's discs. You might wonder, why would you do that? Well, I saw the Rook Act, so I thought maybe he's playing with a full play set of those. And now in turn uh, number three, I'm playing my 2-2 Scave Zombie. Unfortunately, uh, Roman disenchanted my Bad Moon. So that's my bad. And look at that, playing a chain on my Scave Zombie. And he's gonna just gonna keep two, uh, two lands in the game that means next turn he can actually look for six basics if he wants to and there is zombie master so i really made the choice to first play the scape zombies trying to lure roman into a bolt or a chain so that i could play the zombie master afterwards and hopefully the zombie master can survive now of course roman is playing with four bolts and four chains with earthquakes disintegrates so it's absolutely no guarantee here that my zombie master will live but I mean, he's, he's got a he's got a better shot at it. And look at this, he actually survived the whole turn. And I wonder what's gonna happen when I attack with it. So I'm playing three with the ritual to cast another zombie master. And this is important because now regeneration is online. So if he casts a bolt, I can actually regenerate it. And he's playing a swords. Yeah, it's regeneration doesn't work against swords, of course, taking two life. Playing a Will-O-The-Wisp with another Dark Ritual. Interesting. Having two mana left passing turn here. So interesting choice to play the Dark Ritual. Let me think. I guess I play Dark Ritual into Zombie Master. Interesting choice. There is a Spirit Link. Is he going to play that on the Zombie Master? I wonder. Probably, probably is just gonna buy some time here. So the counter indicates that the spirit link is on the zombie master. And let's see what I'm gonna do. It just looked like I just unloaded a lot of dark rituals. Not quite sure why I did that. And playing a royal assassin. Again, I'm not really sure. It just seems such an open target right now for direct damage. Also, it can't regenerate. Earthquake for one. 
Yeah, so I'm going to lose my Royal Assassin here. We're both taking a damage as well. This is an interesting game. I mean, Roman's got two, la two lands and he's not really doing anything else. Another Dark Ritual. I'm swimming in Dark Rituals this turn. Or this game, I should say. Looks like I'm taking back my Dark Ritual. Instead, I'm playing a Gloom. And this obviously came from my sideboard. This is going to make it at least difficult for Roman for now because because of Gloom, there's attacks on Roman's white spell. So he will need to pay out, uh, play out some more lands. That's kind of what I want to force him to do. I want him to play more lands. As soon as he's got three lands in play, the land tax no longer works. But lo and behold, he still doesn't activate his two taxes. He doesn't want to discard his lands. That is really interesting. He's playing a chain now, taking a damage for playing a chain. Oh, my zombie master. Interesting. Because he could have taken care of my uh, Willow. Very interesting play style. He doesn't want to play out that third land. He wants those land tax option to stay open. And I just have to pass turn here. So, very interesting game. My Willow, of course, cannot do a thing right now. It's nothing more than a solid blocker. And, I mean, with that Ivory Tower, Roman will start gaining life. And that will give him time and opportunity to get enough lands. Look at that, so he's gaining life, going to 18. Give him the opportunity to get enough lands and gonna finish the job. Another Ivory Tower, so both of these are coming from his sideboard. So he's playing a completely different game here in game number two. And I just don't want to play out any lands. I feel like if I start playing out lands, he's gonna start you know, picking up lands again. On the other hand, he's refusing to play his third land, so. He can use his land taxes regardless, and I've got this ivory tower issue. Hoping to draw into something, finally playing my swamp number four, another gloom. And gloom, I mean, gloom is nice, but gloom is not going to help me here. The land taxes are already on the board. And uh, there is a lightning bolt. And I think what I'm really regretting now, what I remember playing this game at game number two, I'm really regretting boarding out all those Neverneural's Discs, realizing that a Neverneural's Disc, when you're playing with Mono Black, is the only way to get rid of those enchantments and artifacts. So, you know, I really need them. And look at that life total of Roman, it's just insane. Like, he's now on, what is that, 18, 19, 29, 34 life. There's a Bokrath, 3-3 three, three Swamp Walk, pretty cool creature, but it's not going to do anything uh, on this board. Well, I can deal some damage, but like I just said, Roman is, look at that, another <laughs> another six life added. And uh, yeah, this is not looking good for me here, but I have to say in game one, it looked bad for me too. So maybe I can, I can still bounce back. And un I've still realized that I still haven't seen a Lance Edge. So I'm still not sure if he actually plays with Lance Edge. I mean, it makes absolute sense by now seeing the Ivory Towers as well. And the fact that he's not playing out any creatures anymore. But still, he's not playing it. And he's now choosing Lance again. So are we going to see a Lance Edge pretty soon? He's got enough life. He doesn't have to worry about me throwing Lance at him. Because remember with Lance Edge, you can discard a land card to deal two damage to your opponent. And both players can do that. So I can also make use of the Lance Edge. The big problem here for me is that the life total of Roman is just ridiculously high. So, I mean, I just don't have enough. And there it is, a Lance Edge. And this is bad news for me. The nice thing, by the way, for the people watching this and are thinking about making their own budget brew, you can make this tax edge deck very, very cheap. Why? Um, because land tax has been reprinted, but land's edge has also been reprinted in Chronicles, and that makes it quite cheap. So if you want to brew this deck, you can actually do that. And you might think, hey, but isn't that City of Brass really expensive? Well, what we've done, we've looked at, let's look, what is he going to put on the board? Disintegrate here. On what? On my life total. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm toast right now. He's probably going to finish me off. But what I wanted to say, yeah, there we see the lands going to the bin here. He's counting his lands. And I'm dead. <laughs> this is it. But what I wanted to say is, uh, congratulations, first of all, Roman. It's 1-1, one, one, so that means we're going to game number three, so that's exciting. Uh, but what I wanted to say is you'll probably see that City of Brass thinking, yeah, but a, a City of Brass from Arabian Nights is, is way too expensive. What we've done... 
we've looked at the cheapest card. So we said, what is the cheapest possible reprint of City of Brass? That's actually the World Championship Edition. It had to had to have the same art as the original art. And I think that card goes for like a dollar. So you, you could play with those cards in this tournament. So it's a very lenient reprint. And also if you have the original Arabian Nights, what I did is I looked at the price of the cheapest reprint version with the same art. You know, that was that was a, a condition. So uh, that being said, it's 1-1. One, one. I guess I'm going back to my sideboard strategy, putting in my Neverneurals discs again. And we're going to go to game uh, number three. Game number three. And I just love it when it's a game three. I like it. Hey, I get to start. Who knows? Maybe I can get a match win in. Now, remember, for this tournament, what we did is you got a point for each game that you win. So even if you lose 2-1, you still earn one point. And if you win 3-0, you just get three points in. So that's a system uh, that we use for this Lord of the Jank tournament. And there is a first swamp here passing turn, it seems, or yeah. I think. Let's see what Roman can do here. So my first turn is uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, not that spectacular. It is difficult, by the way, for me, for example, I could decide to play a first turn Willow, but then the risk is that my opponent has a chain or a bolt and he can take care of the Willow, where I can also choose to play my Willow turn two and keep a Swamp open to regenerate. So those things are kind of go for your mind when you're playing against bolts and chains. And the same thing goes, for example, what you saw in game two in that order that I decided to first play out Scave Zombies, kind of catch that Chain Lightning for my Scave Zombies, and then after that, the next turn, play out my Zombie Master. And it looks like we're discussing something here. Not quite sure what it is. It looks like I passed turn now to Roman. He's playing a Mishra's Factory passing turn here. And Dark Ritual into Batmoon and a Will-O-The-Wisp. So this is quite an interesting play here. So I could have done that turn one, but I didn't want to encounter a Bolt scenario. So now I can still regenerate my Willow. And of course, that does cost me an extra card. So it did cost me that Dark Ritual. And that's, of course... You know, that is difficult with Dark Ritual when you're playing against a white and red deck because they have access to swords, they have access to chains and to bolts. So if you invest your ritual into, for example, playing your traditional play in Hypnotic Spectre turn one, there is such a big chance. Look at this again, <laughs> using my ritual to keep my regeneration spells open here. Um, my mana open for re regeneration, sorry. Um, so what I, what I wanted to say is uh, when you're playing against red and white, they have and the swords and a burn which makes it really difficult to kind of use your Dark Ritual effectively. And maybe when I'm looking at this, I should have kept them on hand, perhaps for Drain Life later on in the game, um, because that's also in my deck. So let's see here first what Roman's going to do, playing a Mountain. And he's probably not going to attack. Why would he? It's a more interesting question if I'm going to attack. I think I will. I'm willing to trade here, I think, for the Mishra's Factory. That would be quite a nice trade because he loses a creature and a land. And I'm only use, losing his Cave Zombie. But, okay, there's a chain on my Cave Zombie. So, okay, that scenario is out of the window. And he's just going to attack for two here. Makes sense. So I'm going to drop to 18. And I'm playing an extra Swamp attacking first. So he's going to drop to 18 as well. And now I'm playing a Book. And now I am taking a risk. I'm saying, you know, if you've got burn, you've got burn. You just played your chain. Hopefully you don't. But if it's so, it's so. I really want to try to get cards with my book. I haven't seen... Well, he has disenchants, of course, so he could disenchant it now. Let's see what he's going to do. He's just going to attack here. So I'm going to drop to 16. Playing a land tax. That's unfortunate because I already have four cards here. Attacking... And playing another Willow, interesting. So instead of choosing to go for a card in my end step, I choose to play another Willow. I think, in all honesty, when I'm looking back at this, what I should have done is just say, you know, I'm not going to play the Willow. I'm just going to take extra damage from the factory if you attack with it. Because um, basically then I'm drawing a card for two lives. So that would have been a better decision. It's interesting when you look back at your own games, you always see decisions that you think you should have made differently. And then sometimes I surprise myself because I did the right thing. But in this case, I think I should have just kept that mana open. Oh, Armageddon! 
Oh, this is bad news for me. I mean, I can text it with the Flyers, I guess, but I mean, I, I don't have any lands. He's got a land tech, so he's got lands in hand. The question is, is he going to play them out? I'm sure he is, because he's got, he's got to have a play right there. He's an ivory tower, so he will start gaining life again. So I'm lucky here with finding the swamp. Can I find something? And now I wish I would have kept those dark rituals earlier in the game. Like, I understand I wanted to play them out and regenerate. I think that was... That was an understandable strategy, but after that Armageddon, remember, I didn't see an Armageddon until this game three. On the other hand, you can expect an Armageddon in a deck with Lantex. So I should have kept that in the back of my mind. Attacking here, Swords on one of the Willows, at least dealing one damage, going to 11 here, and making a Swamp of that lonely City of Brass. And I wanted to do that after he cast, uh, after he tapped it, because the risk is if I play Evil Presence and in response he plays a Burn spell, he can still kill one of my Willows because they don't have mana to regenerate it anymore. So I guess I still got a risk now. I mean, he's got Land Tax. He's used it, I believe, before he played the Armageddon. So he can now play a Red Source and, and, and burn my Willow. Does he really have to? <clears throat> Excuse me. Does he really have to? Because... He's gaining life from the tower anyway, so there is a plane's passing turn. I do feel I'm kind of lucky with finding the lands here. Another sword's going to 18, but there's no pressure mirror anymore for me. And I just have to find lands here. I want that JM Day Tome to get active ASAP. Tapping three here, there's a granite gargoyle. I'm sure I boarded in. Terrors from the sideboard. Attacking here for two, so I'm going to drop to 16. I mean, I, I, st I still have a lot, of, a lot of life here, so I've got some time. Not drawing any lands. This can happen, you know, this can happen. And he's just attacking. He's trying to kind of... Build the cards in hand to gain some life with the tower. Another evil presence. Again, I'm going to play it on the planes because I don't want him to disenchant my evil presence or book, I guess. But it's, it, it's just not ideal. I mean, I'm dropping to 12 here. That granite gargoyle is really doing business. Tapping to... <laughs> mind twist for one. Well, it's better than a mind twist for zero. I mean, I've got to do something. At least he's going to lose a card. And remember, if, if it is a land, it doesn't matter that much. Mind twist isn't really my card anyway, so I'm actually kind of happy it's just for one. Karma, actually, this is pretty good. And I'm quite happy now that I took care of his white mana. Look at that. Karma would be incredibly deadly for me. Very cool. Enchantment, very old school. Really like uh, an enemy card when you're playing black. Attacking again, going to 10 here. And I just have to pass turn and I'm just not finding any lands anymore. And that means that Roman is just slowly killing me here with that Granite Gargoyle. I'm on 8 right now, finally finding a land. Hopefully I can find something. Zombie Master, I mean, it is pretty decent because I've got the Bad Moon, so it's actually not a 2-3, but a 3-4. The problem is I'm on 8. He's got double Ivory Tower, so he's gaining life. He's going to put me on 6. And I've already lost 2 Will of the Wisps because a Willow would be fantastic right now to just block this Granite Gargoyle. There is a strip mine. He's actually stripping his own land to activate his taxes. So that's quite a neat trick here. And now with three mana, I'm kind of getting back in the game, but I think it's too late. He can now activate his tax, gain double life because of Ivory Tower. So he can stack it in a way that he first gets the lands in his hand and then the Ivory Towers trigger. So he's going to get a lot of life here. And look at that. He's back on 16. He's probably gonna, probably, but he's gonna attack me here. There's a Lance Edge, and this is game. Oh, man. 
I think Roman man compliments how you've played this and I think I think you've won it well I know you've won it with that Armageddon play well done this was a really nice match I've lost this one too and I'm actually now discussing with him my sideboard strategy I was kind of confused about his strategy like are you playing a lot of creatures are you playing no creatures are you playing Lance Edge are you not playing Lance Edge uh, very well done Roman I think uh, it was some nice strategy and, and nice to see you uh, you know cast that Armageddon in, uh, in game number three that definitely gave you the match so um, congratulations and if you like this tournament if you like to see more budget brews and more budget magic from Lord of the Jank uh, tune in next week because every Friday I will put on another update and you will see my zombie disco deck trying to battle into the top eight at least I got a point from this game from this match so that is something and uh, I want to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks now if you want to support the channel um, you can do so by liking uh, subscribing to the channel if you're not a sub subscriber yet and also leave a comment let me know what you think of my deck what you think of Roman's deck is that a deck that you would like to brew for yourself like I said it's budget friendly so it's um, it's not a financial issue you should be able to uh, to make it without really uh, having to pay the price of a car to make this deck so that's kind of good news isn't it um, also share it on your socials that really helps and you can also sponsor the channel yes yes you can become a patron of Timmy Talks and you can do that by uh, checking out our Patreon page there's probably a link popping up right now click on that link an info card I should say click on an info card that will take you straight to Timmy Talks Patreon page talking about the patrons let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic amazing patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.